At the end of this video, we'll take a look at Mad Ramp's innovative pivoting ramp system, the safer, easier way to transport your ATVs and snowmobiles. Stick around. Before we get started, I'd like to give a quick shout out to some of our friends. The Eastern Snowmobile Racing Hall of Fame. Search for them on Facebook. Central Minnesota Pond Racing. Search for them on Facebook. The historic Lancaster Motel for the ultimate Eastern trail riding adventure. Crane's Snowmobile Museum at 172 Main Street in Lancaster, New Hampshire. The Vintage Snowmobile Club of America Quarterly Magazine. The Bridge Street Garage Racing Team, the house racing team of the Vintage Snowmobile Podcast. The New Hampshire Snowmobile Museum at Bear Brook State Park in Allenstown, New Hampshire. And lastly, if you decide to advertise with the Vintage Snowmobile Podcast, this could be your advertising message. Good evening and welcome to the podcast. I'm really glad you're here tonight. I have a robust lineup of vintage snowmobile entertainment on tap for you tonight. If you look at item number one, we've got some guests. That's guests with an S, plural, waiting for us in the green room. And then uh, if you can look ahead to item number three, we're going to open up the lines for some show and tell where you can come on with your cell phone for some show and tell and show us your vintage snowmobiles and, and so forth. Also, we're going to add to that uh, a trading post segment. So I'm going to post a link in the comments section. If you um, post an ad for your vintage snowmobile or any kind of accessories, um, we're going to be getting to that later in the program and actually look at those posts uh, of things for sale. So we've got that to look forward to a little uh, later in the podcast. Now, in a moment here, we're going to... Um, uh, okay, sorry, my screen was confusing here, confusing me here. But we're going to bring on our first guest here. We've got Max Collins, and um, how are you doing tonight, Max? Good. How are you doing? Good, good. Thank you so much for coming on. My eyes were playing tricks on me there for a moment. Now we lost our other guest, but I think he's going to come right back. That's what was confusing me. All of a sudden, I was about to bring him on, and he went away. <laughs> so hopefully, he's going to come back on. But um, Max, tell us, uh, you've got a vintage snowmobile event coming up in just a couple of weeks. I'm going to turn it over to you. Uh, please tell us all about it. We sure do. Uh, it's March 19th in Island Pond, Vermont. It's our second annual vintage snowmobile show. Last year, we had a, a heck of a turnout. It was huge. Um, it, really was. Much, it was great. You were there, and, and it was a, a much larger turnout than we expected, and it was a lot of fun. So 
We do it from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. at the Island Pond Pavilion uh, in Island Pond, Vermont. And um, this year we're doing a $10 fee to register just so we can kind of boost our cash prizes. Um, sure. We did a small cash prize last year. We didn't know what the what the turnout was going to be like, so we didn't want to, you know, we didn't want to go too crazy the first year. But uh, it's really a fun event. We do cash prizes. We do raffles. We do giveaways. Um, it's a lot of fun. The Kingdom Grill is the title sponsor, and they're located right next door to where we have the event. And um, excellent food and drinks. Excellent place to pop in and warm up if it's a cold day. It's yeah, for it's sure. a great day. It yeah, really that's is. True. We have I had a lot great of meal from them last year yes, at that event, and that's it was right. a delicious meal. It was really Absolutely. nice. Yeah. Outstanding. So. Well, cool. And uh, also, uh, I don't want to ignore our guest who's here. We've got Ray Lacasse, and he's going to be telling us about an event of his here in just a moment. But how are you doing tonight, Ray? Doing great, Mike. Good, good. Well, cool, cool. Um, before we get into all that, um, uh, I've got some footage from the event that Max was involved with last last winter. I'm going to queue up that footage. It just takes me a moment here to pull it up. And, oh, I'm in the wrong folder. Okay, stand back, everyone. We're about to do the There we go. Get some nice rubs. Can't go wrong with rubs. Now, with any luck at all, Bill Stull is watching this. He'll, he'll appreciate this. He's one of the big rub guys and in the vintage snowmobile space. That's right, he was a guest with me last year. Yeah, they've got a great turnout for this. For guys putting on a, the first time putting on a vintage snowmobile show, this is really impressive. And by the way, this show is put on by the nice folks at the Kingdom Grill. Uh, they, that's an excellent restaurant. I had a, my girlfriend and I had dinner there last weekend. Had an excellent time, excellent meal. And that yurt, that tent out there, apparently it's got a big banquet table in there and a wood stove, and you can rent that and have a meal in there with a, you know, kind of a family event or something. Looks like a blizzard. The colors are a little different, but it looks like a blizzard to me, like an old 6500. I like that those graphics and the paint and the colors and stuff. Some tells me this has been on the track. Hey there, Blaine Kodasek and Joe Staff. Sorry, I'm not reading all the comments that are coming on. It's all I can do here to kind of. Here we go. This might be Paul Belfay in that elite. I know he's got one, and he's here. But I don't know if that's his. It doesn't look like him driving it. But I, I caught up with Paul Belfay earlier, uh, and he's, he's agreed to talk to us at some point during the show. Uh, you've probably seen him on my videos. He's a regular on Vintage Snowmobile Lovers. He's got an impressive collection, and he's always uh, good at talking up his sleds. He's always got really good information about them. These dolphins are pretty rare, as are these speedways, for that matter. Now, what is this? Quebec. I don't know that I've ever seen one of these. Let's go in for a closer look here. Now we're kind of in the shade here with that engine. I was hoping to get a close up on that. Maybe if I put my hand over. No. Hey Rick White. Hey Robin Richards from Labrador. I bet this thing makes some noise. How's it going? Good. That thing's gorgeous. That's amazing, isn't it? Those are rare too. Is that yours? Or do you know who no, 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 no. Are you you're, uh, Mike? Yeah, Vintage Snowmobile Lovers. Yes. Okay. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Let me I'm, give you a business I'm card. Todd, uh, yeah. Cool. Do, King and Brill. Do you mind if I put you on camera? No. That's In fact, it's a good opportunity to do a shameless plug. Hey, folks, we got 100 and we'll get 96 viewers watching live. Vintage Snowmobile Lovers. This is the owner of the Kingdom Grill. These are the folks putting this on. Yeah. Good stuff. Good turnout. A lot good. of cool stuff. Beautiful stuff. 
I don't know, man. It's a beautiful day. Yeah. A little bit of snow. Couldn't ask for better. Definitely. And uh, especially for a first time show, this is an incredible turnout, yeah, both we're, with we're, we're exhibitors learning. and spectators. We're learning a lot in a big hurry, but hopefully next year it's bigger and better and a little more organized. But, I don't know. Awesome people, too, because everybody helps. Yeah, for sure. But uh, beautiful day, man. You want to talk up the restaurant? Uh, I, I know there's a. Well, my girlfriend and I had dinner here last weekend, and they told us on the way out that you've got a banquet table in that tent. Yeah, yeah that's the, the yurt. Uh, people. Uh, actually, that's the other one right there. Okay, yeah. guys. <laughs> nice. We She's got, more fun to look at than me. Cool, yeah. We've got 101 viewers right now live. That's awesome. Yeah. Cool. Okay, cool. The next time you do one of these, uh, be in touch with me. We'll help yep, you pre I'll promote it on the front end, you know, because yeah, I've got the largest community of vintage snowmobile enthusiasts anywhere. Yep. Over 50,000 fans. How are you doing? Good. Hey, Jesse, you're live on Facebook. Oh, how are you doing? Nice to meet you. <laughs> so excited. The sun came out, the snow came down last night, and the wind's dying down a little. This is awesome. Yeah, an amazing so turnout. Awesome. I'm so excited. We were thinking maybe a dozen sleds, maybe a couple dozen, not so much. Yeah, this is so impressive. We're excited. Definitely. And next year it'll be even better. We just. Yeah, for sure. Especially the second time around, once it's established, people yep. are aware of it. Trial and error, and we're ready to go. Definitely. This is awesome. Now awesome. I'm gonna get a close up on your your Kingdom Grill. Oh, I'm not yeah, getting yeah, weird yeah. or anything. Uh, and this is that Kingdom Grill right behind <laughs> us. You want to talk up uh, the grill and the menu and, and the, the banquet yep. table in the tent? Do you mind if I just run some more slips? We're running out of room. Not at all. Go ahead. Yeah. Then I'll be back. Sure. I'll be right here. Sorry, audio. I shut the mics off just so we could have better audio for that. <laughs> I got you. <laughs> God, but, I thought um, I'd lost you. I know. <laughs> yeah, before we went on, we were having a little trouble with the audio, but it looks like we worked it out. But um, And I need to adjust my camera here. My head's being cut off. There we go. No more severed head. <laughs> but uh, one, of the th one of the points I wanted to make um, is one of the things the two of you have in common is, is you both – uh, put on a new show last year, a first time vintage event, and they were both yep. incredibly well attended and incredibly successful. So I can't speak for the rest of the country, but as far as Northern Vermont and Northern New Hampshire are concerned, vintage snowmobiling is alive and well. Uh, would you guys agree? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And uh, um, now Ray, I'll let you tell us real quick about what you've got going on. I think it's uh, next weekend, the 12th, isn't it? Next weekend at 12th, it's a great Northwoods vintage snowmobile ride in Pittsburgh, New Hampshire. Uh, like you said, it's our second one. It's a second annual. Last year, we had about 175 sleds. This year, we're expecting 300 to better uh, vintage sleds. It's going to be huge. Um, the event, um, we're, we're doing a lot of things for the uh, Pittsburgh Firemen's Association. All the proceeds, all the profits uh, going right back into the community. Uh, I just think it's a big thing to do. Uh, they do a lot for the town. Um, this ride, it, 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 it's the ride last year, and we learned a lot. Like Max, I heard, I, I heard them saying they learned a lot. Uh, the stories that were told were priceless. I, I, I mean, that's what I'm looking forward to again this year with more people is hearing the stories about how they used to ride these sleds back in the 60s and 70s. Just yeah. a lot of fun. For sure. That was an incredible time. Yeah. For sure. Now, I'm going to pop the graphic up for your event, Ray. Yeah. Um, do you want to give just kind of a quick uh, shameless plug for the the when, the where, and the how? Yeah. Yeah. So it's 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 March 12th, Saturday, a week from this Saturday, 10 a.m. Uh, we've got two different parking lots, uh, one on Back Lake Road uh, and one on Day Road. Uh, we're raffling off a 1970 Skidoo Olympic. Uh, there's only 500 tickets. Um, so there's a pretty good chance of winning this sled. Uh, we're doing, I've, I've built a, I'm a photographer. I built a 2023, uh, vintage snowmobile calendar. Uh, again, all the proceeds from all of this is going to the Pittsburgh Firemen's Association. Um, we also have a website that people can order shirts, uh, and trail signs, um, commemorating this ride. It's, uh, greatnorthwoodssnowmobile.com can order directly from there be shipped right to you uh, again and the profits will go directly to the Pittsburgh Firemen's Association wonderful so that's greatnorthwoodssnowmobile.com yes wonderful and that's where they can purchase these things and yes. also I, I popped this uh, on the screen here yep. if someone is interested in buying raffle tickets there's a mailing address at the top of that graphic where they can uh, mail in to buy their, their, their raffle tickets yep and uh going to give you an equal opportunity, Max. I'm going to pop the graphic for your event on the screen. Uh, if you sure. feel like doing a, a shameless plug for it, 
Absolutely. Absolutely. We're at the Island Pond Pavilion. Uh, the show is from 11 to 2 on Saturday, March 19th. Um, exhibitor sign-in starts at 9. So if you just pull up with your trailer or whatever you have right up to that pavilion, we will get you squared away and we'll get you parked. And um, there are prizes. There are raffle prizes. There are cash prizes for division winners. Um, we, I, Everybody was very happy with the judging last year, and I hope we're going to make it even a little better with some more classes and with some more options, you know, some more opportunities to win some prizes. So uh, nice. it's a lot of fun. And, and uh, like Mike and I were just talking about, um, if the lake is frozen, um, we had a bunch of guys going for a rip across the lake and back. And that was a lot of fun last year. That was really cool to see yeah, that uh, that green grass monkey sled you showed in the footage. <laughs> that gentleman took it for a serious rip across the lake. And that was fun for yeah. everybody to watch. So we uh, we certainly have a lot of fun. Um, and if you if you make it over there, come see me. I'll be in my vintage Yamaha snowsuit with my Evil Knievel Easy Rider open face helmet on. And you can find me with a microphone in my hand probably. So. Nice. Just like last year. <laughs> Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. Well, cool. And Ray, I don't know if, what you're doing that weekend, but if you don't have anything planned the 19th, we'd love it if you can come join us. Yeah. You know, in, in, in this is the first I've heard about it. So I, I, I might possibly make it over there. And, and as Mike knows, I'm a photographer too. So I could bring my camera over and maybe uh, take a few pictures. That would be amazing. Oh, be perfect. Yeah. That would be absolutely wonderful. Yeah. Well, cool. Cool. And then the other thing I didn't want to forget also is I've got some footage from last year's event uh, that, that Ray put on, uh, the Pittsburgh ride. Um, if, uh, if you guys are okay, we'll roll some of that footage and, and take a look and see what that event was like. Sounds great. Can't wait. All right. <laughs> That looked like an awful lot of fun. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Sure. Now, I've been popping comments on the screen while we're looking at that, and I wanted to see what you guys think of this. Uh, Gary Porter says, BRP needs to make a 2024 ski do Elite with the Turbo 900. What do you guys think of something <laughs> like that? Well, to make sure it's got a roll cage. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Sounds like something I'd climb a tree with. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> for sure. That would be a lot of fun. Get the messes on the in there with you and, oh yeah and, absolutely yeah, take her for a ride she'd never forget <laughs> for i trouble, actually yeah. took my uh, old polaris out a week ago and, and and there was an old elite on the uh trail yeah. um i got to pass it and he waved to me when i went by with my tx it's pretty cool nice that's, that's cool perfect. that's a rare rare sight to see one of them yeah on the trail. absolutely sure. and then ray i believe a mutual friend of ours made you to comment uh, armin buto i know he lives yeah. near you uh, he says, yeah. good evening, Mike and Ray. Ride yeah. Vintage in Pittsburgh. Absolutely. And then he says, go Rub. Uh, Armin's a big Rub guy. Armin's been helping me tremendously with this ride. Uh, he's He's been coming over. We've been having uh, meetings. And, and uh, 
his ideas. Uh, th this guy is so much fun to sit and listen, uh, has so much knowledge of the uh, vintage world. It, it, it's just tremendous. And it's great. Again, the conversations are better than anything with this stuff. For sure. Yeah, he's extremely knowledgeable, especially with regard to Rupp. Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. In fact, uh, Dennis Kov Kovaleski says there's a Vermont vintage snowmobile rendezvous happening this Saturday in Bethel, Vermont, 9 a.m. to cool. 2 p.m. Just Google Vermont vintage rendezvous for more information. And, and thank you for that, Dennis. I appreciate that. That's awesome. Sure. And uh, Paul Billadou says the uh, older sled sleds look so much better. What do you guys think on that? Hundred <laughs> percent. They're not. They're not <laughs> cookie agree. cutters. They're all different. Oh. I mean, everything today is a cookie cutter. It's true. Yeah, the the, the technology certainly is more sophisticated, but there's yeah. nothing like the looks of, especially the mid to late seventy sleds. Like the, I'm thinking like a seventy six, seventy seven TX or a yeah. Blizzard. Yeah. You know, just gorgeous, gorgeous. Yeah. The yeah. LT grays and. Yeah. I, have, yeah. I have to adjust my volume here. Mm -hmm. Okay, there we go. Um, and then Josh Leverker says hello from the snow capital of the Northeast, Tug Hill, New York. Yep. Cool deal. Richard Brazo from Coleman, Wisconsin. Richard was on here not too long ago showing us some sleds in his basement. Mostly nice. skidoos. He had some excellent he has an excellent collection there. Mark Gosso says the, those old sleds are music to his ears. Yep. And Bill Lutz set, checking in from Cranberry Lake, New York. Another good show. Appreciate the compliment. Well, cool, cool. Uh, so I've got one more clip of the Pittsburgh event from last year. This is, um, Ray mentioned that he's a photographer, so he sent some photographs after the event last year, and I put them into a little montage with some music under it. Uh, let's take a quick look at that. Awesome. Looks like so much fun. It was awesome. I got my blood boiling again. I'm already, I'm ready for next weekend. <laughs> for sure. Going to relive the magic once again. Yes. For sure. Now I've got a few quick comments I want to take. Um, we've got. Uh, I think I believe this is a compliment that Jared Ellis is making to us. He said he's watching from Rigby, Idaho, thinking he was born on the wrong side of the country. So I think he's uh, enjoying what we're looking at here. And uh, Jared, come out and see us some winter. There's a whole lot of events out here. And Jared, also, if you've got events out your way, we'd love it if you could share photos with us, videos, anything like that. We'd love to see what people are doing in different parts of the country in the vintage space. Now, this next comment, um, Tony Wheeler. Now, I knew a Tony Wheeler back in the day. I don't know if it's the same Tony Wheeler, but we bought his 76 TX when he upgraded to a Blizzard. Uh, now, Tony, if you're that Tony Wheeler, how you doing? Good to see you. Uh, I wonder if it's that if the world is that small, that would be very cool. And then we've got Doug Carlson. Uh, old sleds are why we all have bad backs. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Wouldn't change a thing though. Always loved the old Chaparrels, and he's from Iowa. Outstanding. Well, very cool. Uh, so we're going to shift here, gears here in just a moment, but before we do, I'm going to uh, pop the graphics for each of your events, give you guys a chance for another shameless plug. Then we're sure. going to shift gears, do some announcements. And I'd like it if you guys could stay on the other side. We've got more things planned. Um, sure. but yeah, we're yep. going to pop Max's graphic on the screen here. <clears throat> and... Yes, indeed. It's the second annual Island Pond Vintage Snowmobile Show at the Island Pond Pavilion. That's Saturday, March 19th. Uh, the show hours are 11 to 2. 
exhibitor sign-in starts at nine o'clock a.m we have prizes for winners we have raffle prizes we have all sorts of fun stuff um there's music not live music but music <laughs> and uh we have some great sponsors gervais ace hardware there in town the brighton snowmobile club uh snow traveler apparel and most importantly the kingdom grill puts the whole event on and uh they're right next door if you want to pop in and warm up get something to eat something to drink uh it's going to be a great time yeah for sure and that's in northern vermont just off of 114 and 111 uh real easy to get to if you're in northern vermont and it's right on the snowmobile too it's a snowmobile trail too isn't it yes indeed it comes right through there as a matter of fact nice so. that was one of the fun things last year too is watching the trail riders go by not knowing there's an event and like whoa look at that exactly at that. Yeah. lined up on either All side of the trail turn. <laughs> that was it very was cool to see yeah. for sure and then yeah ray it's your turn for your shameless plug yeah. Yep. And, and again, March 12th, uh, 10 o'clock to uh, 4 o'clock. Um, it, it's a free event. There's no registration cost. You don't have to register your snowmobile. We have the permit through the state. As long as you're on the trail uh, that's designated, uh, you don't need to register your sled. Um, there's a free cookout, hamburgers, hot dogs, uh, free refreshments, um, donations only. Uh, can't say more about this. And, and like you said, Mike, uh, with, with people going by that didn't know about the event, the same thing happened to us. And seeing people crawl off their new snow machines, take their helmets off, and their eyeballs were, 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 were so big. Just seeing these sleds and walking around, um, I, I think that's what really makes this special is, is it brings back a lot of memories for a lot of people. For sure. And I don't know about you guys, but memories are what it's about for me. I have just such wonderful memories of yesteryear. That's why I do all of this. And probably Absolutely. why you are as well. For sure. And then I'm going to pop a graphic of your raffle ticket. Yeah. Uh, if anyone would like to buy some of these raffle tickets, uh, mail the check to the address at the top of the screen, and you have the opportunity to possibly win a 1970 ski do Olympic. And uh, this benefits the Pittsburgh, New Hampshire Fire Association. Absolutely. Thank you, Mike. Yes, you're very welcome. Well, cool. If you guys don't mind uh, holding out for a little bit, I'm going to make a few announcements, and uh, we'll meet you on the other side. All right. Cool. Perfect. So so we're at item number two right now as far as announcements. <clears throat> and um, once we're done that, we're going to open up the lines for some show and tell and for a trading post segment when you can join us with your cell phone for some live show and tell. If you're sitting in a man cave right now with some snowmobiles, vintage snowmobiles in front of you, love it if you can come on with your cell phone. I'm going to pop the um, link to join us in the comment section. So all you have to do is click that link. It'll bring you on into a waiting area on your cell phone, and then you can join us. Here are the guidelines for doing that. Um, number one, you have, must have something vintage snowmobile related for show and tell. Please hold your camera horizontal for a wide shot. Uh, keep it clean, no nudity, profanity, etc. It's okay if you have something for sale, but it must be vintage snowmobile related. And number five, of course, please keep it positive. No bashing of people, businesses, etc. cetera. Um, so on the other side of this uh, announcement section, we'll be looking for you uh, to see if you'd like to come on and, uh, and do some show and tell with us. So here are some more announcements. The Central Minnesota Pond Racing, their final race series is this Saturday, March the 5th in Glenwood, Minnesota. If you're not able to join, uh, if you're not able to attend that live, they're going to have some video done of it, and we're going to be airing that here on this channel uh, in the very near future. In fact, this, this Sunday, we're going to be airing the uh, races from the Gray Eagle event that happened on February the 19th, so look forward to that as well. Also, in the town of Lancaster, New Hampshire, the next induction ceremony of the Eastern Snowmobile Racing Hall of Fame will occur on September the 10th. And I've got here 1 p.m. The event actually starts at 1.30, but you want to arrive at 1 because you're bringing lawn chairs. You want to take some time to stake out a spot for your lawn chairs and then have time to go inside the museum, uh, Crane Snowmobile Museum. There are over 100 sleds in there. You want to make sure you have time to go in there and look at everything. It's just a wonderful event. Also, uh, if you're liking these vintage snowmobile logos and graphics that are on the screen, uh, if you'd like to buy a a t-shirt, a hoodie, a mug, a sticker, a phone case, a magnet. All you have to do is click the link in the description and you can see a whole host of, of uh, logos from yesteryear and order yourself something and the proceeds uh, go to help offset the cost of doing this podcast. Uh, likewise, 
If you enjoyed last year's uh, podcast season as much as I did with all of the live guests that we brought on, I've got a two DVD set with every single one of those guests. Uh, there's almost four hours of vintage snowmobile entertainment. Plus, if you order here within the next few days, I'll include a third DVD with almost three hours of vintage snowmobile entertainment. So that's close to seven hours of vintage snowmobile entertainment for only $24.99 free shipping. And that goes, of course, to help offset the costs of doing this podcast. Now, what else have we got for events? We've got Whiskey Jack's Bar and Grill. They've got a show and swap meet Saturday, March the 19th in Constableville, New York. Be sure and check that out if you're in that area. So I believe we're done with the um, with the announcements. So we're going to open things up. We're going to go back and with our friends here, Max and Ray, and see if anyone is willing to come on for some live show and tell. Uh, while we're waiting for that, we're going to look at a video. I just have to cue it up here. Sorry, it just takes a moment. Well, all right. Sorry, thanks for your patience. Here we go. Here's the video we're going to look at. This is some footage from Brian Robillard. Um, he's from Connecticut also. He, he has the distinction of being the first person to appear live on this podcast. And he was at a show in Rutland, Vermont, uh, just a couple of weeks ago, and he shared some footage with me. Uh, so let's take a look at that footage. <laughs> Yeah, 
Well, let me uh, change screens here. Sorry about that. I was getting ahead of myself for the next segment. But uh, yeah, what are your guys' thoughts on that video? Anything jump out at you as being interesting or memories that, that were brought up? Oh, sorry. Let me. Cool stuff. Um, I love seeing those old snow travelers, the big giant snow travelers. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. No the yeah. 60s. Yeah. yeah. For the sure. 76 I, TX brings back the special memories for me. That's what I it, have uh, now. Yeah, I've seen that. That's a beautiful sled. Yeah. Yeah. Now, let me ask you this, Ray. 76, was that the first year with that body style? Yes, it was. Yeah, 76 was the first year of that body style. And, and uh, those in the El Tigres in that, that, that age group, I think, were some of the most beautiful sleds that were out there at the time. Absolutely. I agree. Yeah, from like say seventy six to nineteen eighty, the style yep. just yeah, the reliability and the handling and the speed, it, it just it was, it was very much a sweet spot as far as I'm concerned. It was. I I mean, it was like it just jumped uh, light years ahead, you know, from the previous previous years, just a few years before that. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, especially if you look at the the previous version of the TX, just a huge jump. Yeah. In yeah. The technology. Absolutely, Absolutely beautiful. Sure. Now uh, we've got some comments coming in, and then I'm going to <coughs> go into the uh, the trading post section. We've got Michael Spirandio saying hello from Bloomfield, Connecticut. Great footage, Brian. Uh, he, I wonder if he knows Brian Robillard, who shared that footage. Um, also, we've got Alden Banks saying great show as always. Well, thank you so much, Alden. We appreciate that. And um, yeah, so we're going to get into the trading post section of the podcast. Now this is where. Uh, if people have something for sale, uh, whether it's a vintage snowmobile, accessories, parts, memorabilia, anything like that, you can post this on our companion Facebook group. And then we're going to go to that Facebook group right now. The link, by the way, is in the description. So if you'd like to post something uh, for us to look at, go ahead and do so. Uh, I need to remove that top graphic here. So let's scroll through and see what kind of vintage things people have posted okay now our good friend joshua gilbert has posted a 1980 340 txl rxl ice oval sled he's looking to get 4500 dollars for it this is in priest river idaho uh, as far as the details it says a 1980 txl rxl 340 conversion ice oval race sled flannery rxl spec race engine tpr pipes 116 inch camoplast r track fully studded it's a very competitive sled only 4500 or best offer located in north idaho and he can help to arrange the shipping uh, just message him for more details there's another shot of it here and uh yeah that's a very cool sled um yeah any thoughts on that sled guys uh, uh, one like it shows up at the show <laughs> yes, absolutely I wish so I'd open my trailer up on uh, tomorrow morning and see one in it. <laughs> yeah. That'd be amazing. Absolutely. And then also we've got Lorne. Uh, yeah, Lorne Frape posted this. Uh, I'm on the wrong page. Here we go. Okay, so Lorne posted this 1975 Articat Panther 440 for $1,600. This is located in Musoman, Saskatchewan. Now, no, there are no other details about it but if you're curious about this click the link in the description uh to go to the wheels keels and snowmobiles facebook group you can find this and respond to it and uh and ask him questions and see about possibly buying it uh 884 miles a nice low mile example very cool beautiful sled yeah i love those cats from from mid 70s yeah absolutely and that's and in very very clean shape that would uh it, that would win some prize money for sure for sure with any luck we'll have we'll be seeing some of these at the shows at each of your shows because they're very common to see and then yes, we've got indeed. ron edgar now there are no details on this but he's got this for sale it's an enticer yamaha enticer and again if you're curious about that just click the link in the description for the wheels keels and snowmobiles facebook group and you can see about uh, asking some questions on that of ron uh wrote ron posts quite often in this facebook group in fact he's got this cat cutter in here oh, as well cool. yeah that is awesome definitely 
kids love riding in that and adults too for that matter and their size is just right where it's just right for kids but it's also not too small for adults yeah it's perfect yeah and uh what else have we got we've got another item from ron edgar this is a yamaha hood yamaha and tyser 340 hood 1980 he's looking to get 325 dollars for that and if you're just joining us here while we're doing this trading post segment if you'd like to participate even if not this week Next week, post some items in there before the podcast that we that will have available for us to look at. Just click the link in the description for the Wheels, Keels, and Snowmobiles Facebook group, and you can be a part of this segment. We'll look at your uh, slide. Go ahead. That's awesome. I, I mean, just another outlet for people to be able to reach out and, and find vintage stuff. Um, you know, it's, it's great to be able to reach out to these places. Um, I know I needed a part for my, uh, uh, my TX. And I reached out on one of the TX sites and, and God, within a couple of minutes, I had three or four names, numbers uh, to call to get the parts that I needed. It was fantastic. That's amazing. That's amazing how this social media can bring people together, people with common interests together. Absolutely. Absolutely. Especially when you're, when you're specializing in, uh, in vintage stuff. It's nice to not have to sift through everything to find it. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. For sure. And another thought, too, about the possibility with this, this companion Facebook group is that once someone is posted in there and they're observing the guidelines of the group, meaning that it's about uh, snowmobiles, cars, trucks, boats, motorcycles, ATVs, snowmobiles, uh, RVs, as long as it has something to do with that, your your ad will be approved. And then I'll also I'll pre-approve you for future ads. So that means you can post whatever you like from that point forward as long as it observes the guidelines and you can go live with a video. So if you're at a vintage snowmobile event, a race or a, or a show, you can take your cell phone and go live right here on this group and for all of us to enjoy. And then once I find it, I'll share it on the Vintage Snowmobile Lovers Facebook page and maybe edit clips that we can all enjoy on the podcast. How uh, cool so is that? Yeah, that's for awesome. Sure. That's awesome. And then, of course, if you've got something for sale, too, if you instead of taking still images, you can take a video of it and share it here on the on the Facebook group. You can upload the video file or you can do it live. Um, there's a whole host of options by bringing this group in as a companion. I've done this group for many years, but it just occurred to me this week. Well, why don't I make it a companion to this podcast and to my Facebook page? Great job. Well, thank you. Yeah, really. we'll take a look at one more here. We've got one from Steve Pollan. It's a 71 Arctic Cat Panther for $650. Uh, great shape, original seat, no tears. Has just been gone through by his mechanic. Runs great. Private message him with any questions. If it's listed, it's still available. And it's in nice shape for a 71 Panther. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it wouldn't take much to get that to be a show winner right there. Yeah. Beautiful sled. Yeah. Well, cool, cool. So that is it for the uh, trading post, but I just wanted to get that that ball rolling. I'm going to remove that from the screen here and get us back. There we go. So we don't have any takers yet as far as the live show and tell, which is okay. Sometimes we get someone, sometimes we don't, but I'm prepared with some videos. Uh, let's see what else we've got. We've got some footage by Dirk Seams. This is uh, him riding his 1973 Polaris Colt 350. So let me cue that up, and we're going to take a look at him on his Polaris Colt 350 right here.
Awesome. That is <laughs> awesome. Yeah. It's nice to see a nearly 50 year old machine alive and well and out on the trail. It's incredible. It's incredible. Yeah, breaking trail, no less. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For sure. And the other thing I'm very pleased with, too, is I'm getting a lot of people now sharing footage with me. I mean, it's fun and everything to share my own footage. But to me, I like even more to look at other people's footage and see what people are doing in different parts of the country and uh, just kind of mixing it up. And it's a great way for all of us to see what's going on in the vintage snowmobile hobby. Oh, yes. Yeah. So for everyone who's sharing footage with me, I thank you so much for doing that. We've got a couple more. We've got some footage here from Donnie McManus on his 1975 ski TNT 340. And let me cue that up uh, right here. And it's interesting, too, you know, we, just a few minutes ago, we were looking at a 73, and this is a 75. And just in those two years, you can really see the evolution. The, oh, yeah. It really was an arms race through the 70s. Yeah, that's what I was talking about earlier, Mike. I mean, just from, you know, the 73, 74s to the 76. Yeah. Uh, just just a huge difference. Huge difference. For sure. Yeah. Yep. The industry was on fire that whole decade. And then you go from 76 to 80, look what happened. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So it, it, it did. It really took leaps and bounds here for about uh, six or seven years. Yeah, for sure. Even like the 10 year period from 70 to 80 from in 70, they were mostly kind of crude utilitarian sleds being improvised to, to, to use recreationally. And by 1980, they were just it was all recreation and very sophisticated, um, very comfortable, reliable, fast. Just it really, it really, the decade really exploded that whole decade. Yep, the it industry did. exploded that, that whole decade. It technology. did. I've got a couple of images that people have sent me. People are sending me video footage, but they're also sending me images. We've got a Chrysler uh -huh. SnowRunner. This is owned by Jeff Thomas. Um, and if people were watching last week when we did the Amsoil trivia question, this was the answer to the trivia question, and Jeff shared this image. And if you're wondering, well, where is the Amsoil trivia question this week? Our good friend Rob Hilditch, unfortunately, was not available this week. Uh, so we're going to just push that ahead until next week, everything we were doing with the trivia question. And then uh, this is an image taken in 1992 in Michigan. This is a 1969 moto ski owned by Paul Granger. And he was kind enough to share this image with us. Hmm. And uh, cool let's stuff. see, what have we got next? Uh, our last, uh, our next, yeah, our last image of the, our, our last video of the, of the show let me cue that up. This is from Michael Carvela. And I'm not in the right screen. Let's try this instead. I'm bumbling around tonight for some reason on the interview. Let's take a look.
Yeah, very cool. Anything jump out at you guys? What's that? Anything jump out at you guys in there? Oh, man. Just some beautiful sleds. That El Tigre, just yes. beautiful, beautiful sure. sled. Love and the nice Z. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. Z. That, that's a beautiful sled. Do you notice how he, he was panning by and then he came back for a second? Look at that Z. He did. <laughs> <laughs> I would have done the same thing. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And that was, uh, let me get the detail. I've got some detail on that event on the uh, graphic here. Uh, that's from the Michigan Vintage Snowmobile Show. Uh, oh, I thought I had more detail than that. Anyway, I apologize. But there's a vintage show that he attended in Michigan. Um, and, yeah, just really nice sleds, really nice show. And thank you so much to Michael and all of the rest of the people who have shared footage and images with us tonight. Uh, that just makes this podcast that much more interesting to have things coming in from every direction. Um, like I said, I love sharing my own stuff, but to have things coming in from every direction, uh, it just it allows us to all see what's going on in this vintage snowmobile hobby. Absolutely. And Mike, thank you so much for, for, for doing this. Um, uh, this is tremendous. And I, I, I think Max would probably agree. Um, it just gets us going. This is awesome. For sure. For sure. Oh, in a yeah. big, huge way. Absolutely. Yeah. It brings back to me seeing all this stuff brings back so many memories of yesteryear it's yeah and, and again and i i can't state that enough uh the, the the event we did last year and i'm looking forward to it again this year uh with new blood coming um to to, to hear the stories um yeah. you know i grew up I, you know in lancaster new hampshire snowmobile city usa at the time some of the biggest racing in in, in the country at the time you know, I was six, seven, eight years old, and, and man, I just wanted to hop on one of those sleds and go. <laughs> For sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And it's funny, I, I, we never went to the Grand Prix. We only lived an hour or so away, but we never went. Yeah. So I don't know why, but even where we were, we had a few informal drag races, and I found that incredibly exciting, just the sights, yeah. the sounds, the smell of that racing fuel. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, just... And the excitement and just the intensity of the racers too. You could, cause you could be right up there near the starting line, 10 feet away from them. And you could see the intensity and in their, their, their bodies were tightened up and everything. And just so exciting. Absolutely. And there was an excitement amounts around snowmobiling that just, I've never seen around anything else at that time. Well, I mean, just the town of Lancaster, you know, population of about 3000 people when they had the races on that weekend, there was ten to fifteen thousand people there. It, it was wow. incredible. I, I mean, to see what that transformed into uh, for a weekend, it's like you know. And as a kid, it's like, oh my god, it yeah. was awesome. It was awesome. Yeah, you feel like you really feel like you're in the middle of something. Oh yeah, something big is happening. And you're right in the middle of it. Yeah. Nice, nice. Well, cool. It's uh, come to that time to close out the program. But before we do, I'm going to give each of you a last chance for one more shameless plug for your events that are coming up here over the next couple of weeks. I'm going to pop Max's graphic up first. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. The second annual Island Pond Snowmobile Show, Vintage Snowmobile Show at the Island Pond Pavilion. That's Saturday, March 19th from 11 to 2. There'll be prizes. There'll be raffles. There'll be a lot of fun. Mike, thank you so much. You were instrumental in getting last year's off the ground by having me on your podcast and 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 blasting this out to your audience. And I can't thank you enough. And Ray, it's been really nice meeting you and talking to you and learning about the Pittsburgh ride and show. And um, if there's any possible way I can make it, I, I would really love to. So it yeah. seems like that's and, a lot of fun. Hopefully we can hook up. I'm going to try to get over there the 19th. Um, now yeah, that I know about the event. Yeah. And, and, and Mike, uh, again, just like Max said, last year you helped out so much. I had radio stations reach out to me the day after the podcast uh, that, that, that saw this, that, that wanted information. And within an hour or two, I had people calling me. So, yeah, wow. it, it, you it. know, it's fantastic what you're doing, Mike. Fantastic. Well, thank you. I'm so glad to hear that. Yep. That really means a lot. And then before we do your shameless plug, Ray, we've got a few comments coming in. Let's take a look at them real sure. quick. Uh, where was I? Okay, here we go. Um, Alaska Railroad says, seriously, there's a live cast on vintage sleds. He's a huge vintage guy, so he's probably a first-time viewer, and we hope it's not your last. Thank you so much for stopping by. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you're here to join us every week, uh, Thursday night, 9 p.m. Eastern time. That might be 5 or 6 p.m. Uh, your time, but uh, love to have you here any anytime you can make it. 
Uh, Stacy and Art Fosler says you never see any 78 to 79 to 80 Motor C Grand Prix specials. It's true. Those are pretty rare and they were amazing. Uh, let's see. Alaska Railroad says he owns a 2005 700 XP special, but his pride since 1982 is his 1980 Polaris TXL. Outstanding. Yes. <laughs> cool. We would love to see photos or, or videos of that. Uh, um, or if you want to come on sometime live for some show and tell, we would love to see that. Message me behind the scenes. Uh, we'd love to, to, to have a look at that 80 TXL. That's, uh, I think, when uh, Polaris had turned to the color blue from white to blue, wasn't it, Ray? Yes. Yep. Yeah. It, it, they were from white. It, they had a little transition between 76 and, uh, you know, up to 79. And then and then 80, they did. They went to the uh, blue. Yes. Yeah. And then our mutual friend, Armin Buto, says, may the force be with you and guide you to the vintage ride in Pittsburgh on the 12th. All right, man. <laughs> Thanks, Armin. <laughs> Use the force, Luke. <laughs> Dave Lowry says, TXL is a sweet sled. That certainly is the truth. Uh, Alaska Railroad says he feels at home. Thanks, guys. I can listen to Sled Talk all day. Well, cool. And we've got an incredible backlog of, of past episodes of this podcast. So if you're ever uh, sitting there with nothing better to do, uh, by all means, check out uh, our, our voluminous uh, history of, of this podcast. Uh, let's see. Um, Alaska Railroad is talking to Dave, says, I've had many TX sleds. I wish I, wish I owned them all. Okay. Cool. And his dream is a 73 650 Starfire. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, Alaska Railroad says, thanks. Be back again next week. Cool deal. And one more comment from him says, yes, Midnight Blue. Didn't they have something, Midnight Blue Express? What Midnight Blue Express. In the Jerry campaign? Bunky. Jerry yes. Bunky. Mm -hmm. Man, that guy was Polaris through and through, and, and, and he died at a very young age. But, man, that's the era I grew up in watching that team run. Yes. Yeah, for sure. Amazing times. Amazing times. Well, cool. My friends, we have come to that time. We're going to close out the program, but thank you both of you so much for coming on and also to our viewers. We really appreciate it. And uh, looking forward to catching up with you guys at some of the shows. All right, Mike. Thank you, Mike. Hope My pleasure. You Thanks yeah, a lot, always, Mike. As always, the last word goes to our friends at Mad Ramps. Have a good one, guys. All thank right, you. man. Good night. It's the ultimate combination of simplicity and ingenuity. The newest way to load, unload, and transport your ATV or UTV. The MadRamps Pivoting Ramp System. Made in the USA and engineered for strength and durability. Maneuver through tight places and over rugged terrain with plenty of ground clearance. No licensing, no ongoing maintenance costs, and no storage hassles like trailers. Won't slip or move like conventional ramps. Free up more cargo space in the bed of your truck. Securely connects to your truck's receiver hitch. Easily extends for safe loading and unloading. Seamlessly retracts for highway and off-road travel. DOT approved in all 50 states and Canada. Quickly disconnects in under a minute. A unique space-saving storage system. The MadRamps Pivoting Ramp System. Go farther. Go faster. Go safer. When you order using the link in the description, I'll send you three free vintage snowmobile DVDs. When you order using the link in the description, I'll send you three free vintage snowmobile DVDs.